Hey guys, well it's been a while since I've made some videos so I figure I wanna I actually want to start making more videos more often now um, so uh, and actually at this current time uh, right now I actually can start making more videos more often more now so um, so today uh, should I do the video game or DVD update or movie I update I should say I have uh, two Blu-rays I didn't buy any DVDs uh, let's do the movie update in this video so I did pick up two new movies. Like I said, I, I did say in my last uh, DVD and Blu-ray update that uh, I would be buying some more movies. I knew for a fact I, I, I couldn't stop myself. Uh, but for this one, uh, I didn't pay a lot. I only paid 13 I paid like $14 total for everything. So, uh, one was a movie... Well, actually both I've been hunting down for a long time. But one in particular I didn't realize was on Blu-ray. Um, and that particular movie was... Uh, the Wicker Man. Now, this is the original Wicker Man. This is not the Nick Cage remake. This is the original one with uh, Christopher Lee in it. And this is the final cut uh, version of the film. Uh, this came out in 1970 something, I want to say. 70, 74. 1974. So, uh, from what I heard, this one is actually a whole lot better. Usually, when it comes to movies, the originals are always better than the remakes. But there are a few occasions where the remakes aren't bad. Uh, there are a few, there are a few re remakes that I, I felt that uh, hold up pretty well to with the originals as well. But of course, there are still a lot of really bad remakes. But anyway, um, this is cool. I did not realize this was out on Blu-ray. I do have the Nick Cage version on DVD. Sorry, that's a little hard to focus there. But uh, yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, I've actually, I've seen this one. I haven't seen the Christopher Lee one first. I didn't realize this was a remake at the time. Um, I just saw this film. I saw this movie. I think at a, I think I bought this either at a flea market or a, uh, or at a thrift store or something. And I was like, oh, this is like an interesting movie. And I saw Nick, Nick Nicholas Cage is starring in. I, I enjoy his films, even though a lot of people don't. Um, I still I like his movies, um, but I did not realize at the time that that was actually a remake of another film. And this one has Christopher Lee in it. In fact, uh, you can see him. Right in the back there. Um, still alive with us today. Uh, surprisingly. Very, very surprising. He's turning 93 next year. I think he's 92 right now. Um, so uh, pretty awesome that he's still with us. And uh, I've always enjoyed his movies. I really enjoyed the Dracula films. Uh, just him with involvement with Hammer in general. I enjoy all his work. Um, especially with you know Peter Cushing and stuff. I know those two are very good friends from real life. Uh, of course, you know, I also enjoyed him in Lord of the Rings as well, and a lot, of course in Star Wars, too. Um, but uh, I, I enjoy his acting. I think he's very, very professional, very, very talented. And uh, even to this day, um, uh, I think his acting is pretty damn good, especially since he's like 92 years old. Uh, he's, he's very, very active, which is probably good. It probably keeps him going. So um, I know he said for a fact uh, the day he retires is the day he dies. So... And that's pretty. That's a lot of a lot of uh, you know, um, uh, a lot to offer and a lot to commit. So, because uh, you know, most people by the, their nineties, you know, they definitely have retired from working and you know, or either a retirement home or something. Uh, but for him, still working and still able to do these things, obviously he can't do a lot of. He he's only limited to certain films now because obviously. Not all films, you know, offer a role for a 90-plus-year-old. Uh, mostly he does voice work now, but uh, still. And, of course, his voice is very uh, iconic as well. So, But uh, really, really enjoy his work, and I'm very happy. Sadly, I did not get around to watching this. I actually picked this up last week. Um, and sadly, a rule of mine, although I did kind of break it a little bit earlier this week, uh, a rule of mine is I don't watch horror movies after Halloween in the end of October. And of course it's November right now, so sadly I'll have to wait till next October to watch this. So um, I did break it a little bit earlier this week. I did watch the Hammer version of The Hound of the Baskervilles. But I don't consider Sherlock Holmes to be horror, even though that film is con considered a horror mystery film. Um, and that's the one, of course, with Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. But I don't consider that film to be horror. I consider it to be more mystery Sherlock Holmes film. So I did kind of break the rule a little bit by watching that film. But uh, I'm definitely... I, I want to hold off on this. This is this is going to be on my top list of the first movies I watch within the first week of October next year. 
definitely cannot wait to check this out because like I said, I really enjoy Christopher Lee. His acting is phenomenal and I definitely cannot wait to check this out. <clears throat> and finally, oh by the way, this was on this was going at Best Buy. Uh, if you're lucky, you probably should go right now right before they pull everything off the shelf. This is only going for $7.99. Uh, I had a $5 off rewards coupon, so I only paid like $3 and some cents for it. So not a bad deal, not a bad deal. <clears throat> and finally, what I picked up, uh, I saw this at Target for $10. This is, uh, this, is, this, is, this, is about, this is about the price that normally goes everywhere. But to be honest, this is starting to become a little harder to find, at least in my area. Uh, I could order this online, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to pay the exact same $10 with shipping, handling, and everything online anyway. Um, and I really wanted to get this film on Blu-ray. I already have it on DVD. Uh, I sh actually should have grabbed the DVD, dish DVD edition before I uh, did this, but oh well. Um, and that movie is Peter Jackson, Peter Jackson's version of King Kong. Now this is the third remake of the film. Uh, there was the original from 1933, and then there was one in the 70s with Jeff Bridges, which I also really enjoyed as well. Uh, I'd say the first one, the original, is my favorite. And then the Peter Jackson one is my second favorite. And then I would put the third one with Jeff Bridges, the Jeff Bridges version. But I enjoy all three. In fact, I hope to get all three on Blu-ray eventually. Um, I sadly only have the first one on DVD. I have the collector's edition version. And then I have, I think, the Jeff Bridges one on VHS. I hope I still do. Um, but I know both of those are available on DVD. I mean, on, I'm not, well, they're both on DVD, but they're also both available on Blu-ray. However, I think the Jeff Bridges one went out of print here in America, so I might have to pick up the re, uh, the UK version, which I don't even know if it's region free or not. If it's not region free, I can't get it. But um, if it is region free, I know I probably have to pay a little bit of a pretty penny for it. But obviously not the same price I'll have to pay for the uh, um, for the um, out of print Blu-ray of the United States version. Anyway, yeah, so. But uh, very cool. What made me very happy was this contains not only the theatrical cut, but also ex uh, it contains the extended cut as well. And when it comes to Peter Jackson movies, I always pick up the extended cuts. That reminds me. I realized I actually forgot a film that uh, I, was, I also bought yesterday because um, it came out yesterday. And uh, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure since we're talking about Peter Jackson, I'll throw it in. Uh, like I said, I always prefer to get his extended cuts of the films. And one of the films I did pick up yesterday as well was the extended cut of uh, The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog. But uh, anyway, so since we're on the, on the topic of Peter Jackson here, I enjoy his films, I really do. Um, when it comes to getting... Um, I've always felt Peter Jackson is the movie buff or the movie fan's ultimate director. Um, unlike a lot of directors, he really, really cares about his fans and cares about movie buffs in general because he himself is a huge movie buff i'm not saying other filmmakers aren't but you know he really cares about um you know uh his audience he really really does i mean all of his films i know it's pretty much all of his films he always has deleted scenes uh he always has all the extra content that you want he always does commentaries for his films, which I'm very happy he does. I mean, I wish Steven Spielberg would do more documentaries or commentaries. <clears throat> like, I know it's most of his films, he doesn't do commentaries. I'm like, why not? You know, I would really like to hear his input on his films, which is why I enjoy when Peter Jackson does it, because I would like to hear about, you know, his thought of his part of the films. Like, <clears throat> when I watched the commentary with King Kong a couple years back, of course with the DVD edition as well, I believe it does... The uh, audio commentary should be on this Blu-ray. Uh, yep, auto, uh, extended uh, feature commentary with director and co-writer Peter Jackson. Yep. But, um, <clears throat> in fact, that's all. I'm actually kind of glad. I, I definitely have to hang on to uh, that DVD edition because it seems like that is it when it comes to special features on this Blu-ray. That is fascinating. Um, so I'm definitely going to hold on to that three-disc DVD edition I have of the extended cut because this Blu-ray has next to no extras whatsoever. In fact, all it has is the extended and theatrical cut of the film and the commentary, and that is it. That is interesting. Hmm. For, for Peter Jackson, that's very interesting. So if you have the Blu-ray, um, if you don't have the DVD edition, the 3-disc collector's edition, limited edition, uh, definitely pick that up. But anyway, um, going back to Peter Jackson, um, I've always felt that, um, you know, unlike most directors, 
uh, you know, he really puts a lot of content into his film. And uh, going back to when I was watching the commentary, watching with while well, listening to the commentary of, of King Kong, I remember one of the things Peter Jackson said at the very end was he hopes somebody else will do another remake of King Kong because he enjoys, he said he enjoys seeing other uh, directors' visions and, uh, and their idea of what the film should be like. Um, one really cool part is if you do watch the commentary in this film, he'll point out actual props that he owned that he owns from the original King Kong from 1933, and he puts them into this film, which is really a cool. I mean, I think that's that's the way it should be. You know, if you do a remake, try to add stuff from the original back into the film. You know, and I think that's cool. And this film is very, very well done. I think it's really cool. Um, I have all the video games for this film as well. Um, I do need to get the soundtrack. I haven't done that yet. Um, I do have all the DVD editions. Uh, I do have the really cool... Um, statue collector's gift set edition that comes with the uh, King Kong climbing up uh, the Empire State Building with Anne in her hand. I have that. Um, and I've always enjoyed his films. I really want to get the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit really cool collector's uh, gift sets. But they're bloody expensive. and I know. Right now I don't have the space for them. But um, anyway, going back to the other, uh, <laughs> the other movie I picked up recently is the extended edition of The Hobbit, uh, The Desolation of Smog. I definitely cannot wait for the third film to come out next month. It's going to be freaking awesome. I did pick up the 3D edition, uh, which also contains the um, uh, the 2D Blu-ray as well. And I mean, <clears throat> it's awesome to see, uh, you know, just the, just the content he gives you. So you have the 3D version, part one and part two. And then, of course, you have the actual... Blu-ray itself of um, uh, the movie, the 2D version. And then, of course, this is what I love the most, is he gives you two discs, two discs of special features, going behind the scenes, the making, everything like that. And I'll be honest, I keep putting it off every year, um, but I think this year I'll actually do it with Lord of the Rings, because I have the complete extended edition Blu-ray set. Um... I definitely cannot wait to go through these and just watch the behind the scenes. By the way, I should point out, I also have the... Oh, I forgot the name of it, and it's sadly... It, I have it sit, sitting down um, on its back, and I can't... And the, I'm always seeing the bottom of it, but I don't I don't remember the name of it exactly. I, it's the really cool... Um, uh, I forgot what it was called, but anyway, it's all the behind the scenes footage... Of King Kong that has uh, even more extended footage behind the scenes than than that's on the three disc uh, DVD set I have. I forgot the name of it. Oh, I forgot the name of that set. But anyway, it was basically it's like a it's kind of like a chest or a um, not like a chest but like maybe like a, a suitcase type of box. Uh, looks like it looks like an old fashioned suitcase. And uh, basically inside it contains two disc DVD set along with book and art cards of all behind the scenes of the, the making of uh, King Kong. So it's pretty cool. But something like that, you know, I think it was, what, I, really, I wish I didn't. Sadly I have a bunch of other stuff on top of it so I don't feel like taking it down. Uh, it's kind of like, kind of like that behind me. See I have a bunch of stuff like the CNET box sets, the game sets. See they're all like stacked on top of each other. That's kind of what I have over there. I forgot the name of that set. It's gonna drive me nuts. But anyway, um, awesome set to get. That's like twenty bucks. Pick it up. It's, if you're if you're a huge fan of Peter Jackson's King Kong, and if you want to know a bit more about behind this behind the scenes stuff, go get it. It's awesome. It's twenty bucks. In fact, um, that a really cool gift set uh, with the statue and everything. I believe it's going for like thirteen, fourteen dollars on Amazon right now. So I definitely recommend you picking that up. And when it comes to the Hobbit movies, I really enjoyed it. Uh, one thing I did not realize until a little while ago, I did not realize that Benedict Cumberbatch was actually the person who voiced Smog. That's pretty awesome. So not only do you have Dr. Watson in the movie, of course, you know, Bilbo Baggins, uh, but you have Sherlock playing um, uh, Smog. And then also on top of that for BBC fans, I, I did hear that uh, I don't follow Doctor Who, but I know for a fact the second wizard, not Gandalf, but the other wizard, was one of the um, other doctors from Doctor Who from the, I think the '90s or something, but uh, so BBC fans, I know we're pretty happy with this film, knowing that only do you have Sherlock Holmes, but you also have Doctor Watson, and on top of that, you have one of the doctors from Doctor Who 
in this film as well, so that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, definitely cannot wait to check this out. I think this has like 25 minutes of bonus footage added back into the film, which is awesome. Um, and uh, definitely cannot wait to check this out, because I will be watching this again very soon before I go see the next Hobbit movie. Which, I believe it's the last one. I don't believe he... Did he break it up into two parts? I don't think he did. I think it's going to be one final film. Uh, I think the one film I am thinking of that's going to be broken into two parts is the Hunger Games uh, last film. Which uh, which is fine. I, I, I'm really looking forward... I actually enjoy when people when they do break up films into two parts. Because if, if I feel that if you want to keep that film as one whole, you'll lose a lot of content and a lot of time to be shown. So, um... If you're going to break it up into two parts so you can uh, show more, I, I always recommend that. So that's why I didn't mind it when they broke up the last Harry Potter movie into two parts. I thought that was perfectly fine because there's a lot to, you know, finish up. So, yeah. All right, so uh, for updates, I picked up three Blu-rays. Not too bad. And with the exception of this, uh, I only paid like $13 for both of these. This was a little expensive. This was like $34, something like that, but it's worth it. I mean, it's you got the 3D Blu-ray, you got the 2D Blu-ray, and then you got the Blu-ray content of both discs for bonus features. A little expensive. Yes, I will, will grant you, but I will, I will only buy this once. Um, I say that now. That's actually totally a lie. Uh, I know for a fact once this comes out in 4K Blu-ray, which there's a rumor going around that this time next year, 4K Blu-ray and 4K Blu-ray players will be available. But I won't be buying any until probably like five or ten years from now because <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll wait till 4K actually gets into the market and actually gets taken. But for right now, I think it's a little. I think they're rushing it a little too fast with the 4K. I mean, I understand Blu-ray is almost ten years old now, not quite yet, but uh, uh, still, I think they're kind of <laughs> rushing it just a little bit. I think they probably should have waited another five or ten years before 4K was out, but. For the video game industry, I think it's great. I think for something like that, it's perfect. But for when it comes to um, normal live stream content and cable and movies and stuff, uh, I think Blu-ray for now was fine. Um, and to be honest, seeing how most uh, broadcast companies are with cable and stuff, uh, I don't even know how they're ready for 4K yet. I mean, they barely do 1080p. I mean... I watch a lot of, you know, like The Tonight Show and stuff like that, and other uh, HD broadcasts of news stuff as well, and I'll tell you, the 1080p is horrible. It is horrible. It is very, very snowy. It's very, the quality just isn't there. I mean, it's just horrible. And, you know, I don't know. I just, I think it's crazy that they're, they're jumping into 4K so soon because I think a lot of companies and shows are just not ready for it yet. Um, I don't know, we'll see, because most stuff still, I mean, they're still broadcasting stuff in 4x3, uh, you know, letterbox, or 4x3, uh, full screen, like, a lot of commercials are still like that, and I'm just like, guys, you really need to get, uh, I understand if it was 10 years ago, but now most people have widescreen TVs, and it's just like, guys, you need to really up your game so yeah do i think the market is quite ready for 4k yet no not yet uh for the video game industry it's really good because you know video games will really benefit from 4k definitely and i'm not saying movies can't either but i'm just thinking you know in general uh cable and satellite and stuff like that they're i don't think they're quite ready yet i don't think they're quite ready yet so not to mention i also want to i actually i like to go to best buy or I think Best Buy is the only place around here right now that actually shows 4K TVs and actually displays them. I don't believe Walmart or Kmart or Target actually has any right now. I think the most I have is 1080p. Um, but uh, I know I, I just like to look at them and it's kind of cool to see how 4K looks. And I, I just I saw that I was like you know I, I was fa I was fascinated. I was like hmm I was like you know 4K is out. You can buy it, but what can you watch on it? And I saw so far the only thing you can buy. Is you can buy like a, it's kind of like a cable box kind of thing, or like a, you know, like a dish, you know, it's it, it's like a box, you know, it's like a, it's kind of like a cable or dish network box, and basically it allows you to watch, it will it will enable you to stream 4K content. Like I know, um, I know YouTube's getting ready for 4K. In fact, you can still you can watch movies on 4K, but or uh, watch videos on 4K, I should say, but. Um, Obviously, right now, most people's computers... I mean, most people's computers right now only do, like, 1080p. 
But uh, I know for back my computers only do four four uh, 1080p. They don't do four K. But um, uh, I do I do know YouTube is getting ready for it. Um, according to what I was reading on the box, I was like, what what what's available for four K? Uh, Netflix is getting ready for four K. That's pretty cool. So you can actually stream four K Netflix Netflix now. Uh, that's that must be a real. Ugh, I'm just thinking, wow. You know, imagine. Uh, you must have really good internet to do 4K streaming. I mean, that's that's got to really drag your internet down. I'm thinking, you know, wow, especially if you're doing it uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, I'm thinking for something like that, you would definitely need Ethernet. I mean, that same Wi-Fi can't do it, but I'm just thinking if you do do it Wi-Fi, that's got to slow your internet way down. I'm thinking, wow. But, um, and according, I was just, they, 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 uh, on the side, the little um, info, on what the box offered it you know they they mentioned youtube and netflix and then there were like a few news stations that did like uh, 4k and stuff like that and i think sports is doing it now too but uh, still 4k are we ready yet i'm not gonna say i i don't want to say you know i definitely feel the content isn't needed i'm certainly very excited for 4k i know for a fact 10 years from now i'll probably have a 4k tv and i'll definitely be collecting 4k movies and stuff and video games uh, I believe I don't I don't I don't know about the Xbox One, but honestly I don't care about the Xbox One. But I know the PS4 is 4K ready, uh, is 4K compatible, so that'd be kind of cool. But uh, um, yeah, very cool. Alrighty, guys, I think I'll <coughs> stop talking for this video. So I picked up the Wicker Man, King Kong, and the Hobbit: The Desolation of Smog. All on Blu-ray, pretty cool. So definitely looking forward to checking all of these out. Uh, I know for a fact for this year I will be checking both of these out, and then of course once Halloween comes, uh, Halloween, once the month of October comes next year, I will be checking this out. In fact, I'm pretty sure this will be one of the first movies I watch within the first week. So very very cool. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching. Until the next video, next DVD and Blu-ray update. Um, I actually do have a couple of movies coming in the mail, so I did order some stuff on the mail. And uh, so, yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Alrighty, guys, thanks for watching. See ya.